How's it going, everyone? This is your astrology horoscope for Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. I'm astrologer Alex Skiles, and welcome to the Moon Base. Hope you guys are doing great and happy Tuesday. Good to be here with all of you as usual. My reading sale is going to be over on the 21st, which I think is Friday. So there's two slots left, and I would jump on that as soon as possible. So if you want to book a reading with me, the link to my website is in the description of this video, along with all my social media platforms, my Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. So if you're new here, hit all those links. Like this video, leave a comment, say what's up, share this video. Hallelujah. There's a lot of water in the chart, in the sky, in the chart, whichever way you want to put it. Family matters, security matters, emotional matters, especially are coming to the forefront of the conversation here with Mercury and Cancer. Mercury's going to be two degrees today. Mercury's moving very quick. Venus is moving very fast, too. Um, which we're going to have that Venus retrograde come 2025 in Capricorn. I'm pretty sure. Um, so Venus is here six, halfway until it's Venus retrograde, right? And Mars is at its 90 degree square point, almost exactly where Mars is going to retrograde in December. So we got Venus and Mars, you know, halfway through until they go retrograde let's put that in perspective so you know there's a lot of repressed feelings and emotions i think that can come up today with pluto um dispositing the moon and scorpio here okay venus and mercury and the moon's ruling sign so the moon is at the heart of the matter today you know this can bring up a lot of repressed feelings a lot of repressed emotions and there's definitely a lot to say you know it's like especially in relationships relationships have been such a big part of this north node in aries south node in libra all the way through taurus season and you know venus and taurus and even aries season through the eclipse i mean relationships have been such a massive focus whether it's romantic, friendships, business partnerships, financial partnerships, creative partnerships, it doesn't matter, you know. But now we're talking about, you know, not just our romantic partners, but with Venus and Mercury and Cancers, this brings this whole element of familial relationships, right? And with Pluto here, dispositing the moon, and Venus and Mercury and the ruling um and the moon's ruling sign I, I i feel like when it comes to family matters when it comes to relationship matters you know i feel there could be a lot of projection of our unconscious state of our unconscious being or the unhealed unconscious to me pluto is always the unconscious or the collective unconscious um so and i definitely think there could be a lot of projection coming out emotionally because to me when we're talking about Pluto, we're talking about Scorpio, we're talking about Cancer. You know, things get very defensive when things get emotional. You know, logic, we've gone through such a mental time period here in the sun, still in Gemini. But when Mercury was there, with you know, Mercury ruling Gemini, I mean, we were in such a mental frame of mind. Now it's the the emotions are starting to supersede, you know, and we have a better, clearer understanding of how things have come to be and where we're at and where we're headed, you know, because cancer wants to find a more secure path and wants to charge towards the light, right? Like, it's crazy because here in just a few days, by the 21st, the sun's going to be in cancer the first day of summer. But it was, it was like as soon as Venus and Mercury went into Cancer, it's like I just got that feeling of summer. I'm like, wow, okay, it's here it comes. It's like we are at that peak moment. This is a peak moment here. So these conversations are peak. These relationships that are forming or need to be reworked or revisited or reassessed. Um, 
you know, this is a very, a very peak moment and really getting to the bottom of things. And the moon in Scorpio really wants to get to the bottom of shit. It wants to know why. And, you know, there is no like, oh, let's talk about it later, right? It's like, we need to figure it out now, you know, especially with Pluto here dispositing the moon. And, and Cancer too. It's like, it, it's like, it doesn't want to let go of these emotions, okay? It needs to, like, understand. It needs to figure it out. And with Mars and Taurus too, it's just like, I got to know where I'm headed and, you know, and for me to know which path I need to take, I need to like, you know, get to the root and get to the bottom of this understanding, you know, before Mars can really move here. And Mars, you know, was opposed by the moon yesterday. So there was this kind of reflective moment of like, wow, like, you know, looking at looking at ourselves, it's like, wow, do I really do that? Do I really like come off that way? You know, it's like, you know, this is a massive reflection moment, you know, when we're talking about the moon. We're moving into cancer season. This is all about reflection and reflecting on not necessarily the past, which that could come up a lot too, and it has been coming up a lot, which for better or worse with Neptune and Pisces, it's like, man, getting caught in the past is not necessarily where we want to be right now. And Saturn is trying to teach us, right? This is where fucking with Saturn and Pisces, this is where like the, the physical and the non-physical merge where we try where we start to understand these things you know in the relationship between the physical and the non-physical world that's what saturn and pisces teaches us so there could be a lot of conversations around like you know i don't know if you're aware of what you know your tone is or how you come off like this kind of projection with pluto and moon and scorpio it's like us bringing conscious awareness to these unconscious projections it's, and it, this goes back to our relationships and the people we're connected to and it's like you know like i want to feel more secure in this relationship and i want to feel more comfortable and settled and feel like hey we're on the same wavelength because with this moon or this mercury and venus making this quincunx to pluto today at one degrees and the moon here in scorpio it's like man things can feel a little disconnected when things feel a little disconnected this is where we start to project because we get uncomfortable or other people start projecting onto us especially with you know deep unconscious stuff childhood shit like all that stuff tends to come up the, and through aspects like this you know and with cancer it's like it's always assessing its environment if the emotional vibration is okay is everything okay are you okay how can i how can i help you how can i make it better like do i do you, did i do something wrong like this is the kind of energy with this venus mercury quincunx pluto and the moon in scorpio so it is this awareness and i think too it's like if we feel uncomfortable it's like we want to be able to speak it it's like hey i don't feel comfortable i don't feel secure emotionally like i don't feel like i can express my emotions i feel like my partner is disconnected from understanding how i actually feel or me and my partner like they're, we're just not connecting in the same way you know or even with friendships especially i mean there could be this disconnection of you know, just friends, people who are your friends or people you're connected to, you know, or people, <laughs> people across the internet, right? We don't want to be getting into, um, internet battles, right? With this kind of energy, you know, especially with the moon and Scorpio, it's like, you're wrong. I know the answer. Fuck your answer. You're wrong. I'm right. Right. And Mars and Taurus, too. I mean, this very fixed Mars, is it's always right, okay? The moon in Scorpio being ruled by Mars, a Scorpio being ruled by Mars. It always wants to be right. It always knows the right answer. It doesn't really want to hear other people's opinions. So with these aspects coming up today, that can be kind of awkward and kind of feel a little disconnected emotionally. It's like, this is a great time to have these conversations of like, you know, like, I noticed this. I'm aware of this. Are you aware of this? This is how it makes me feel. I want you to know. You know. I, I don't think this is necessarily an aspect to where, like, outburst or chaos, you know, can, in, you know, take over. The moon is getting closer, tightening its square with Neptune, or the sun is tightening its square with Neptune. But, you know, like, we've gone through Venus and Mercury squaring Neptune here, and... 
all that craziness. So we, we're on the other side of it, you know. There is still some things that need to be understood. There's still some things that are unclear, and maybe some of these projections are some of the stuff that's still buried, or where you know we're deceiving ourselves, or maybe where we're being deceived, or you know, where a kind of smokescreen of you know, or like look over here when something else is happening on the other end. You know, they want to keep your attention over here, but really, like there's something else going on. So, with the sun tightening its square with Neptune, there's going to be a lot more exposure to deceptive, st uh, deceptive situations or deceptive um, communication. I mean, we already went through that with Mercury square Neptune, but still, like that's what that kind of started to bring up is that you know people weren't actually following through with what they said. People weren't actually meaning what they were saying. Uh, you know, their thoughts and ideas weren't necessarily grounded in reality. So now with Mercury and Cancer and Venus and Cancer, it wants to make things more real and understandable. It wants to be able to see it and feel it and touch it to know that it's secure, right? That's Venus. It's all the senses. So Mercury and, and Venus and Cancer, it's like it's got to assess its environment. It's got to, you know, look at, you know, its entire connection through the people that they're connected to or that we're connected to at this moment. It's like, okay, these people, you know, I feel comfortable with. Like, these people really, I don't feel comfortable, you know, over here. So, and this moon will try and Saturn later throughout the day going into the afternoon. So, you know, I think, too, we can get a lot of work done today. Today can be kind of action-packed, but in a more emotional way, right? So, I think, too, like, when this moon trines Saturn, it's like we can, once we get through the kind of awkwardness, of today with Venus and Mercury's uh, quincunx Pluto, you know, that moon involved um, with Pluto as well. And Scorpio, it's like once we kind of get through the awkwardness, I think we can start to find more practical solutions and really lay the foundation. Like, okay, emotionally, this is what I need. You know, emotionally, these are my desires. You know, and on a psychic level because there's a lot that we have moon and scorpio saturn and pisces mercury venus and cancer so we're starting to move into that more intuitive psychic place you know especially with neptune as well at 29 degrees so you know our psychic vibration our spiritual vibration has increased so high um and it, i think at its highest peak that we'll probably see in a very long time and we'll never see Neptune at 29 degrees in Pisces for the rest of our lives after next year in 2026 when Neptune's fully in Aries. So with Neptune at the 29th degree, Saturn in Pisces and this moon in Scorpio today, it's like really like, okay, like laying the groundwork and laying the foundation and being realistic and having practical conversations, but also compassionate and empathetic and, you know, very, and having sympathy too, you know. Because we're not all on, on the same page at this moment. There's a lot of different dynamics going on. There's Especially with all of this, with the sun and Jupiter still in Gemini, and now we're starting to get a lot of water energy going. It's like, you know, our physical nature, our mental nature, and our emotional nature are so active all at once, which is good, you know. We don't have any planets and fire signs, which is pretty wild. But... You know, when it comes to our physical nature, our emotional nature, and our emotional needs, and our emotional desires, this is a great day to really, like, set the foundation of what you want that to look like, you know, in your partnerships, especially, of like, hey, you know, I need more security. I need more backup. I need, I need more backup, right? I think Venus and Mercury together here are really helping us get to a place within our relationships because Venus and Mercury have been so close together here for a hot minute. You know, and in Gemini, it's, 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 it's all over the place. Now Venus knows, ex Venus and Mercury know exactly the direction it wants to head, right? Cancer's a cardinal sign. It knows exactly where it wants to go. It wants to feel more secure. It wants a healthier environment, Okay. It wants to be able to believe and trust everything the five senses can experience. So this moon shining Saturn today, I think, can really help us 
lay a more solid emotional foundation because Saturn's slowing down here. Let's take a look at that, actually. Let's see what we are at. Yeah, Saturn is starting to slow the F down here. So, you know, there is a lot of reassessing you know, restructuring things, you know, restructuring things emotionally, especially, and getting to that more deeper unconscious space, you know, especially when the projections come up through the awkwardness, which can definitely happen today. So it is with Saturn slowing down here and the moon really in harmony with Saturn today. It's like really setting strong boundaries strong emotional boundaries especially with the moon and scorpio and saturn it's like saturn's all about boundaries scorpio is also all about boundaries it's like you can't cross this line i'm not gonna let you in you know only certain people get into scorpio world right with saturn and pisces pisces has such a hard time with boundaries and letting people or you know saying hey like this is my line don't cross it it's like we're trying to understand that on a on a physical level, not just in our heads or floating around in our, in our mind as an idea, you know, of what our boundaries should be and not be able to speak it or communicate it, which Pisces has a hard time doing a lot of times. So these are some lessons that we're going through. And when Saturn goes retrograde, a lot of that's going to come up, especially with boundaries or where we've been, you know, misplacing things or misplacing our energy or where we've kind of misled ourselves or where we've been misled you know and the sun's going to square neptune too so that's going to come up a lot so today really focusing on boundaries your emotional security your emotional values what makes you feel secure you know and expressing that you know security and you know comfort and just being whole and being wholesome <laughs> with Venus in Mercury and Cancer, expressing that uh, openly is th this is a very good moment to really lay it out on the table. You know, wear your heart on your sleeve. You know, we're about to move into Cancer season, so it's, it's emotions are about to ramp up a lot, and we're gonna have two fucking full moons in Capricorn, which is crazy to me. One the the first full moon is going to be at one degree. The second full moon is going to be at 29 degrees. That's so crazy to me. So let's just... Pluto is not back in Capricorn yet. I don't want to talk about too much about this. But Pluto is not back in Capricorn yet. But it, what I'm feeling intuitively... Because the last year was the last full moon we had in Capricorn. Um, with Pluto in Capricorn, right? Um, or no I don't think Pluto was in Capricorn but yeah in January the last new moon in Capricorn uh, with Pluto in Capricorn so with, with these two full moons with Pluto not in Capricorn I think this is going to kind of bring up a lot of 2008 to 2023 it's like we're going to experience that ending all at once you know whatever kind of systems and structures that need to be transformed, transmuted, metamorphosized, all these things. Like these full moons that we're coming into in cancer season, which in just a few days, you know, it's going to be a big reflection of what 2008 to now is going to be. Or what, what it has been. And what it is going to be. We've already got a glimpse of what Pluto and Aquarius is going to be. So, I will say, even though Pluto's not an Aquarius, I think it's kind of a special thing that we're having two full moons in Capricorn right before Pluto moves back into Capricorn at 29. And that full moon, it's going to get wild. So, it is, it is also remembering. It's going to awaken people of like, holy shit. This is what happened between 2008 and 2023. I know some people are more awake now. Whether it is on a collective level or on a personal level, it doesn't matter, you know. So, that's going to be coming up a lot with the past 15 years have been just about 16, yeah. Anyway. 
It, this with the ten of cups. It, this is very. The, I always love this card because it's very cancer too. You know, this is like summer is coming in here, right? The heat is on. You know, we're feeling the days and the time compression. You know, expand. So there is this very expansive energy, and to to me too, it's like when we talk about oh, Jupiter is ex exalted. In Cancer, it is like when the sun moves into Cancer, it's like this is where time is like expanded, right? Jupiter expands. This is when the sun comes to Cancer. This is like where the longest time expansion occurs through, you know, the northern hemisphere. So this is like with Mercury and Venus and Cancer, this is where the focus is. It's really putting your focus on what really matters, you know, putting value on the people who really matter in your life, the people who make you feel secure, whether it is your family or even people who make you feel like family or if you don't have family, connecting with those people who really, you know, take you to that place that we all long for on that level of connecting, you know, like we come from the same place, but at the same time, remembering that even if we're not family, even if we're, you know, not connected or we've never met each other, we do all come from the same place, the same source. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things, too, when we talk about the answer season. You know, we talk about family. We talk about this, but collectively, and maybe, too, with Venus and Mercury and Cancer making that quincunx to Pluto today, it is like things feel disconnected or maybe things feel a little disconnected in a family situation. It's a good reminder to, you know, not just focus on just the immediate right because pluto and aquarius it's so it's all about the collective right and venus and cancer it's all about your your family and your the security of your family because that's what truly matters in life but also with this pluto and aquarius and venus and mercury and cancer making an awkward angle it's like remembering that it's like you know what like no matter what even if there are issues within families or issues within people that you're connected to or things feel disconnected, it's still, you know, important to remember that we all come from the same place. We're all here for different reasons and different purposes, but, you know, we're not that different. So, anyway, I will leave it there. Damn, 22 minutes. I will see you all on Tuesday. And have a lovely Monday. I'll see you all on Wednesday. My bad. My brain's a little farty. I've been working all day. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Peace.